Hello and welcome to our morning worship. This service is brought to you by St Thomas of Beckett Church, Ramsey. My name's Ian Osborne, the rector of the church. We are in creation tide, the season when in our services we are thinking about God's creation, God's goodness to us and our responsibilities. Um, last time, uh, if you followed our service last week, we looked at um, the fact that God is a good creator um, and that creation needs to be rescued. This week, we're looking at the plan, God's plan to rescue us through um, uh, the story of Noah and his ark. Uh, we are using quite a lot of uh, materials this week uh, that are sourced from the Iona community. So our thanks to them who have made them available through the Church of England uh, creation tide uh, webpage. Opening prayer. Uh, please say the words in bold. We gather to worship God who created the mountains and the seas and delights in their majesty and might. Let, let us look and learn from God. We gather to worship God who is full of compassion and mercy, so to anger and kind in his dealings. Let us look and learn from God. We gather to worship God who created the mountains and the seas and calls us to care for the world. Let us listen and respond to God's call. We gather to worship God who is full of compassion and mercy and calls us to care for each other. Let us listen and respond to God's call. As we relax into our time of worship this morning, we'll begin by watching a short film uh, showing you uh, some of the island of Iona. film of uh, part of the world, a place of pilgrimage of which I'm very fond, and a reminder of the uh, splendour of the great waters. We'll come now to the, the first part of our Bible story, which also, uh, well, which takes us into the story of Noah and his ark. Reading in Genesis 6. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, 
and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds, and the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I have made them. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. I've entitled that The Problem. Just invite you to notice how for the, the original authors of this story, um, at least three, maybe four thousand years ago, the solidarity between people and the rest of creation was obvious. Human beings have gone wrong and that's corrupted the whole of creation. And so God, when he chooses to start again, doesn't just plan to remove the human animals. I don't know how exactly we make a logic of that. Uh, in our age where we are quite alienated from the rest of creation. But I think we can say that anybody who has studied any natural history, seen how um, animals and insects live, red in tooth and claw, and anybody can say that the earth is still full of violence and suffering. And so we will come now, having identified that problem, to a time of confession. Um, I'll say each of the petitions. After each one, we'll say together, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. God, you have called us into freedom, but we confess that we have not always used that freedom rightly. Sometimes we have used it to look after our own comfort at the expense of others. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Sometimes we have used it to abuse or exploit the earth which is our home. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Sometimes we have used it to silence voices which are different from our own. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Sometimes we have used it to prop up unjust systems which keep others bound. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Sometimes we have used it to keep those with whom we are at odds trapped in guilt. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Merciful God, forgive us where we have abused the freedoms we have to restrict and restrain others. Help us to see that in so doing it is also ourselves we are binding into slavery and give us the courage to act differently in the future. Amen. May the God of mercy... May the God whose mercy is as expansive as the heavens above fill you with the knowledge of his forgiveness and help you to live with the full and flourishing freedom which is his intention for all. Amen. So we have recognised a problem. We have confessed it and received absolution. And so, so now we come to a hymn of praise.
So before the hymn, we heard about the problem. Now we hear about God's plan. God said to Noah, So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. I will establish my covenant with you and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. I only really want to make one very simple point about that very familiar story, Noah's Ark story. I think it's a story that we have all read uh, as children. It's tremendously familiar to many of us. And so we kind of stop noticing it. It just, things happened as they happen naturally. Um, God uh, asked for help. God recruited Noah uh, so that Noah became the agent of the salvation that God had, uh, had in mind, that he intended for the animals and the birds and so forth. This is not self-evident. It doesn't go without saying. Um, the, the flood was God's doing. God could perfectly well have whisked two of every animal onto the top of a mountain or Oh, I don't know, given that made them sprout wings or whatever means he could have chosen to save them. But God picked a bunch of the human beings who were the cause of the problem and asked for their help. And this says everything we need to know, in the sense, about the way God works with us. With us is how God works. God doesn't break our freedom or damage our characters by steamrollering us. Now, that said, one has to recognize how completely dependent Noah was, you and I are, on God's grace. It is by God's grace that our hearts keep beating. It is through the love of God surrounding us that we grow from being helpless babies to being people who have agency, who can choose to do one thing or another, to work with God or not. What we offer God by way of our help is often uh, very little more than our yes, our desire to serve God and work with him. Everything else God supplies. The, the wood, the pitch, the nails, uh, it's all from God. What would have happened if Noah had said no? In a sense, it's a stupid question uh, posed about uh, a Bible story. Um, stories happen as they happen. But what I'm getting at is, um, is the role of our agency. Um, I don't think God always needs us to help him in uh, his work of salvation. In fact, I think mostly he doesn't. Uh, we are in such a pickle through our bad choices. And yet God continually, off his own bat, as it were, out of his love, surrounds us with care and love. He constantly rescues us from our own foolishness and selfishness and cruelty and destructiveness. But there is a limit. Eventually, God will allow us to make our own choice, to stew in our own juice. I don't know what that limit was. Uh, in the Noah story, in a, state, in a sense, it's not meaningful. But whether we say yes or no to God, I do believe makes all the difference in the world, because otherwise we wouldn't ultimately have that freedom, which uh, God does respect so much in us. God has allowed us to alienate ourselves from him. He's come to meet us in the far country to which we had exiled ourselves, in the person of Jesus Christ. 
And in Jesus, God invites us to rejoin him, to be his friend, to work with him as a collaborator. But we can still say no. Another little film to watch now with music, a film of the sea coming in. This is this is the tide coming in on, on Iona. Um, this is an opportunity for you to reflect and to pray. I'm not going to say uh, prayers of intercession in this service. I, I would rather invite you in your own mind and heart to consider what your response is to the story of Noah of the problem that humans create and of God coming to the rescue, but not overriding our freedom, but working with Noah to rescue creation. What's your response? What do you want to say to God? invited you to respond in prayer as we watched the tide coming in at Iona. And now we'll sing a hymn together as a second response.
second, a very short bit uh, more of Bible reading. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. I've called that the challenge for me, for you. The world is broken. The world is suffering. God is drawing it towards healing that seeks to co collaborate with you and with me. All we have to offer God is our goodwill, our desire to be part of the solution. So what is on your mind today? What can you do? This is a season of creation tide and each of us, I think, should be thinking about how we can reduce our contribution to environmental harm, but no doubt many other things as well. How we can heal the suffering world. Leave that with you. And we'll say together a closing prayer. God, the breaker of bonds, you long for all creation to flourish. Help us to see how and where we can speak and act to loose the bonds which constrain and maim the earth and give us the courage so to speak and act even when it brings ridicule or risk. So may we play our part in loosening the bondage of death and decay and bringing in the life and joy of your kingdom. Amen. Closing blessing. May the blessing of the God of freedom rest on you. And may you know the freedom to love expansively, live generously, and work tirelessly until all creation enjoys the freedom to flourish as God intends. Amen. Have a blessed day. <laughs>